In politics, as in life, that old saying is usually true. You dance with the one who brought you. Naturally, an effective politician has to listen to supporters without letting special interest donors take unfair advantage. Judges have one job and one job only, to run a fair and impartial courtroom. Our whole system of justice depends on keeping judges free to be fair. The Founding Fathers did not want judges dancing with donors. So, how does an independent, fair-minded judge get elected, anyway? We've been asking that question for a long time. Some states began electing judges within 50 years after the American Revolution. But the real problem began much more recently, when judicial candidates had to start raising big money to win an election. And the need for big money opened the door for powerful special interests to bankroll sympathetic candidates for the bench. But judges who are slanted toward particular interests are not what our founders had in mind. The Founding Fathers established an independent judiciary. That means being able to judge fairly at all times when dealing with disputes among citizens. Independent also means keeping an unbiased eye on the executive and legislative branches to make sure neither oversteps the boundaries of its powers and crushes the rights of the people. Some people think an independent judiciary means judges can do as they please, but that's not the case. As U.S. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer said, independence means you decide according to the law and the facts. Law and the facts do not include deciding according to campaign contributions. How can we resist the threat of political bias in the courtroom? By being skeptical of ads chiding judicial candidates for their supposed politics. By examining where big campaign contributions come from and the possible strings attached. And by supporting judges who run fair and independent courtrooms, whatever their politics might be. Justice for all is a beautiful thing. This just wouldn't be America without it.